Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Sierra West by Board and Dice. It plays two to four players, takes about an hour and a half to play, and it's for ages 13 and up. In the game Sierra West, you're going to relive the old pioneer days by basically moving along and gathering certain resources, you're going to maybe be uh, fishing, perhaps dealing with bandits, or even just gathering apples. What's interesting about Sierra West is is in the game booklet, it will have four different scenarios that you can play. Apple Hill, The Gold Rush, Boats and Banjos, or Outlaws and Outposts. Either one of those four scenarios can be chosen, and uh, basically the game will play very similarly for the basic mechanics, but with some unique different components in depending on which ones you're going to play, whether you're going to be fishing or not, or gathering gold. Uh, but you're going to have some interesting things you can do in this game. First of all, you're going to get your own player board, you'll be able to select between three different cards how you want to arrange them, and then you'll use your pioneers to move across these tracks to gather resources to be able to move your wagon and gather more cards or more areas, as well as, of course, building certain things like caverns and or outposts and whatnot. The game's got a lot going for it. It's actually rather simple, but there's quite a lot to it and a lot of components to show you. We'll go down below, I'll show you what's in it, I'll explain how to play and how to win, and then I'll give you my review. So here we have Sierra West and everything included. And as you can see, there is a lot included. We'll talk about the base components, the extra components, and then the board, the basic setup, and then how to play. First of all, every single player is going to get a player board here, uh, which is going to have a unique little aspect, which will show you these little things here. We will actually be taking these cards and placing them under here formulating your tableau to then utilize your characters to move across these pathways here. But don't worry about that yet. This is going to be your stack of cards you start with. It has the hat symbol, which means it is a starting card. These are the four animals you start with. That are the first four starting traps. And then you're also going to get one of these wheel or wagons, which you'll place over here on the wagon space. And your three different meeples. You got this little Ash Ketchum dude, which you'll place anywhere in this area here. Uh, this guy here, which can start on your board, but we'll end up going over here. And this guy over here, he's got a little hat, which will end up going over here, but we'll start on the player board. Take your starting cards and set them down somewhere. And then uh, you, of course, are going to have a starting amount of things depending on what specific scenario you're doing. We're going to be doing the apple scenario, so we're going to get this buck here, and we're going to place it along with our starting traps. And then we've got these two extra little chits here. So you're going to take your three starting ones and place them on your stone, your wood, and your meat area on this board here. And because we're playing with the apple scenario, we'll be placing these ones over here. These are for the extra players in the game, uh, extra little starting pieces, along with everybody's going to get a turn structure card that explains how the turns are going to go throughout the game. These are the extra player starting boards. So we'll go ahead and move all this stuff aside, because you only need me to show you how a round works with a single player in this game. Additionally, there is going to be this additional board here, which will allow you to buy certain buildings, and these are the building slots you can buy them with, and then the type of color will determine where you can place them, green with any of these three greens and brown with the specific brown one here. Uh, shuffle these tiles up, deal out four, and place them just like this. And remember, these will be moving down across throughout the game when people buy certain things and being get gotten rid of as well. These are the extra bucks we won't be needing, along with the uh, extra cards for the extra players for the specific game scenario. These are the starting resources in the game, whether they be the bricks, the wood, the meat, and the gold. These little feet here are going to be movement tokens. will let you move your character one or two spaces if you gather them. And the nifty little uh, pack mule here or pack horse, which will count as kind of like a half of worker. When you gather this guy in certain ways throughout the game, you place it in that area there, and then you can place it up here in your tableau, uh, which will let you be, be able to do certain actions. I'm going to go ahead and take this starting card here as well, which is part of the apple scenario, and I can shuffle it into this deck here. And after you've shuffled your deck, you're going to simply place it next to your player board. Depending, of course, on what scenario you're playing is going to determine how you start the game off with. In this specific one, here you're going to put these two pieces of board together. This is your wagon track that will go across every time you move this wagon. It will move across here and there is a cost associated with the amount of movement needed in order to move across this track. This is your mountaintop range and you're going to be able to move your character up these areas here to the point where you can finally get to one of these cards here. When you reach a card that has been flipped over, you'll be able to purchase that specific card if your tableau has the right uh, symbols in it. 
these extra fives and tens are basically so you can increase the amount of resources you have. So if you ever have more than 10 of these pieces of wood, you can take one of these guys here and put a wood on top of it. And that will show you, show people that you have more than 10 pieces of wood. <laughs> this stuff all here is the star is the additional scenarios you can play with since we're going to be using the apple scenario we'll move this apple board over here that attaches to this board along with this little apple tracker here which i'll place just down here which shows you how many apples you're going to have throughout the game this is a shared community pool so if there's six green apples at any point on your turn you'll be able to utilize those six green apples there's a gold rush there's a die there's additional this is like the boats and the fish we don't need these uh, these are extra tiles for the, another specific game mode. We've got these like, these are like the outlaws. So there's a ton of a different, a different scenarios in this game that we can utilize. And here, as you can see, is the outlaws and a bunch of the cute little fish here, which we're also not going to utilize along with, we have some boat tokens here and the different decks provided for the different scenarios uh, in the campaign for each and every single player. There is everything you need for all the four different scenarios and all that is all extra. But what you see here is plenty enough. Okay, so we have moved everything aside. We've got our player here. We'd be playing usually a two, three, or four player game, but there is a solo player game as well. And we've set it up based on the scenario. This one here is basically set up for the Apple scenario. And the game works pretty simple. You can look at this turn order structure here, or I'll go ahead and place one in front of me. And we're going to start by doing planning. And after you shuffled this deck here, you're going to draw three of these cards. And on these cards is going to be the different colors based on the different roads. So you're going to have these tan color here, and then you're going to have the green color here. You're going to then on your, just before your turn starts, after your other your opponents have completed their turns, you're going to organize it so that the middle card is on the bottom and the other side cards are on the top. So it should look something like this. And then you're going to go ahead and take the three cards that you've situated according to how you want to, to situate them. And then you're going to go ahead and place them. And it should, if you do it right, look something like this. I'm doing it backwards, so you'll have to excuse me. But it should look something like this. And in which case, you're going to see all the grays on the bottom, or the browns, or teals, whatever you want to call them. And then up here is the greens. After you've situated your, uh, your green and tan paths, you're going to now assign cabins. So, as long as your guys were in these areas here, which if it's the first turn of the game, they won't be, then you can go ahead and assign these guys to the cabins. And it tells you which guy can go to be associated to which cabin, and uh, which guys can be associated to these two spaces on your opponent's turn. But because you're starting off, they're right there in the middle, they're just hanging out at camp, you're going to then take them to their paths. And each of them have a specific path they're going to take. And then you can do path actions. What's really cool about path actions is you can go ahead and move one character as many spaces as you want, and then you can move the other. So you can kind of coordinate how you want your characters to move. They don't simply have to all go across. And each of these little places are going to give you some kind of benefit, whether it be moving one space, and that'll let you move this wagging across, provided you can pay the resources, or move a character up on this board here, which we'll go ahead and just move. And if you're, if you're down here, you can go to any of these spaces here. I'll go right there. Then we go over here, and that's going to gather us a specific type of resource, which would be that wood there. That's a double move, which will give us two spaces closer. We need some food, of course, too, so we'll take that food. And then we have wood. I'll take some more wood here. This guy down here isn't going to go, because that's just the order I chose. He gets two pieces of stone. And, oh, we ran into a dig. Digs are cool, because digs will allow us to purchase either these over here, or they'll let us pick up cards, provided we're on them, and provided the cards have been turned face up. There's a cost associated with anything in these two areas, and it shows you that's one of any resource, and that's two of any resource. So in this case, to dig, it'll cost one. There's also usually additional costs if you want to buy from this track here. So for instance, if I want to spend, uh, let's see, one meat, I can go ahead and spend that one meat, that's the resource cost to dig, and then I can choose to pick up this, that was the dig cost, this is dig cost plus one, so that would cost two, this would also just cost two, and that would be a dig cost plus a movement, we'll go ahead and take one of these guys and place it down in our green areas that are blocked, which is good, we want to block these areas off with actual useful, uh, location so that way they don't make us lose points at the end of the game. Moving on, we'll go ahead and gather another stone, and then we're going to go ahead and go to our last space here. And that's an interesting one. That is an apple one, which means that based on where our our little wagon is, from that point all the way to the left, so there's going to be more apple cards that are going to spawn here, uh, it will allow us to gain apples on this track here. So for instance, if this, here, this one was right there, he would gain two red apples. 
So we'll just go ahead and say that there was three on here and I'll show you three just so you get an idea of what it can do. After that, we can actually move up and that these are the top areas here. So for instance, I can go ahead and take this guy and place him here. And that says if I spend three apples and because these are uh, community, I can go ahead and spend all three. So if these were here before my turn, that would also help me. And that would get me a gold, which is nice because they're worth points at the end of the game. And then with this guy here, I can place him on any of these two areas here. And I'll go ahead and place it here, which means I have to spend these two plus this one. And then I can move uh, up on this, this gray track here. I can move my token up one. These are all point values. And at the end of the game, you'll get these points. And whenever you move up on these tracks here, you are also going to gain whatever it says. So in this case, I'd get a gold. And after that, I'm pretty much done. I have assigned uh, cabins, which I didn't have any. I did my path actions for both of them. I did my summit actions. Uh, which, you know, moving around here and doing all this good stuff. And then I'm going to pass. I reset my figures. I get rid of these guys here and put them into a discard pile. And then I draw three new ones and wait until my opponents finish their turn. But I can go ahead and try and organize this how I think it best, uh, how I would see it best fit for myself. Uh, and that is pretty much how the game works. Basically, as in, in this specific scenario, as your guy gets higher, uh, you'll be able to buy cards using this dig option here by spending the cost, whether it be a one or a two of any resource. And I'll take that card. I can put it either on top of my deck or in the discard pile. This, in this specific scenario, is going to let me get more apples as well as use apples to gain certain resources and or bonuses or even move up on this track here, which is very, very nice utilizing double movement or a movement to go across this and spending the resources is nice too because at the end of the game these tracks are worth points based on these numbers here and this number will duplicate will, will multiply that number so if that was two and this here was at one one times two is going to be two points at the end of the game so we definitely want to go up on these tracks here because it's going to score us more points and we also want to utilize this specific wagon because it'll give us even more at the end of the game very nice very nice indeed and uh, that is mainly the idea, but on your opponent's turn, so let's say our opponent takes their turn, we'll just go ahead and take three random cards, and on their turn we can actually do something as well. And I'll go ahead and show you that as well. So this is, uh, I'll show this as my opponent's tableau here. As you can see, there is a deer here and a fox. And if you're willing to, you can actually go ahead and take your workers or worker and place it on this trap space here. And if you do that, you can spend one resource of any type. So I'd spend this. And then I would choose one of the animals they had laid out and flip that token over which is a good way to not lose three points at the end of the game, like these show, as well as whenever this action comes up, which is this one here, you'll be able to gain all the resources from all the animals that have been flipped up. So you definitely want to do that. However, if you have any characters in these two spots here, on your turn, you're not going to be able to utilize these guys in these areas here. You're simply going to have to move them from here up to here. So it's kind of up to you whether you want to utilize these spaces or not. Because in this case here, if you spent a, mo a double movement token, you can actually move your guy from one space on the track down to the next space on the track, which can be very, very beneficial, we can say. Uh, but that's pretty much what you can do on your opponent's turn. Spend a resource, take a dude, and put it on this trap here. Additionally, if anybody goes up on any of these three tracks here, you can take one of your guys, place it there, and you'll gain a resource of your choice, but you won't be able to utilize these buildings based on the character you place there. So there's a lot of uh, deciding where and when you want to place things. Uh, the last thing I kind of want to talk about for this game mode here is if these two cards were bought, whenever cards are bought in this little mountainous area, you're going to flip over cards that are not covered. Much like, I guess, Fluttering Souls. The ones with the apples will actually go into these slots here. So that way, we, as your wagons move across, whenever you gather more apples, you'll gather all of the apples down and to the left. So in this case, you gather three green and you gather two red if you ever came across this specific action. Very, very nice. The way the game ends is once all of the Apple cards have been flipped up and placed out, there's going to be one more turn, and then the game will end. And you're going to tally your points. You'll check to see all the negative points you have, whether they be here or any buildings you didn't buy. You're going to give yourself one point for any gold, for each gold you have, along with one point for each of these movements you have. And you're also going to score points from this track over here. And it can be zero to five points, and then each of them is multiplied by this number over here and that's the basic idea whoever has the most points at the end of the game is going to be the winner and of course there's three other scenarios that you guys can go ahead and check for yourself down below in the description to see if you want to learn more about sierra west
All right, so you caught me. There are a couple caveats, but it's pretty good, I think, for going all the way through. You can get this pack horse here, which we talked about a little bit, and when you get it, based on one of the cards, it'll show pack horse, and you'll be able to take it from anybody and place it on your player board. There is a specific area in which it can go, which will allow you to spend one gold for any resource when you have the pack horse, as well as after all of your characters have traveled down these lanes here, you can use the pack horse as one of the top three abilities, because normally you can only use two out of the three, but with the pack horse, you'll be able to use the third ability if you want and if you can afford it of course and then the last thing for scoring is when you're gathering cards from the mountain you're going to be scoring based on the number you gather and it'll tell you the bottom right hand corner of this player board here uh, one card will net you one point at the end of the game which is not likely you're gonna get more than that and getting more than nine cards will net you 35 plus five for each additional card very very good uh, so gathering cards is a very useful way to play the game as well and that is basically it of course like I said before you'll be able to choose between doing the trap action and or moving up on uh, when people move up on the track gaining a resource or using those workers to go down here and do one of the abilities that is either green or that is the light brown and those are going to have a specific uh, key that will tell you in the in the rule book what they do they're all very different some of them will say you can turn all of your boots this round into gold or you can increase your movement by one if you do this or i don't know there, 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 there's a few of them that they're all fun they're all useful in fact i strongly suggest you filling up your tableau okay so sierra west the game is good. Very, very good. If this game seems like it's going to be your game, you should definitely consider picking this one up. I really, really had a good time with this one. It has a lot of unique mechanics to it that I haven't seen before. The fact that it has four game modes, and they all function the same way, but feel very different, is nice as well. Uh, what I also really enjoy about this game is the fact that you're making your tableau. It's just three cards. You're organizing it how you want, but the way you organize them matters, and it matters so much. There's not a lot of aggressive combat when it comes to me versus you necessarily, or you versus anybody else, but there are certain things you can do that you know other players are trying to do, and you can kind of combat them by gathering things that they may want and now you have instead. There is also a path to choose where you can simply do what you want to do and somebody can do what they want to do and of course with more players comes less pathing and more uh, shenanigans can arise in the game. Uh, to start the game off it's slow and you got to figure out what you want to do and how you want to do it and how the game functions but after about two or three rounds you've got the game down pat. You understand that you want to gather the resources to then in turn use the main actions at the top of your cards to move up on the tracks and also to move your wagon to multiply those values of points. Gathering gold is worth a lot of victory points so you can actually use that to your advantage as well. The game played longer in my first game because I chose to make it go longer because I was not winning. However, once I started doing well, then I chose to gather more cards up to the point where then I chose to end the game. It kind of gave me a little bit more of a boost. So winning the game is going to likely make you want to end it, but it's at the cost of slowing you down. And losing the game, you're going to want to try and gather as much as you can to push ahead. Uh, there's a lot of beautiful components in this game. The artwork is solid. The theme fits in very well in each of the different... Oh, I played three of them. Uh, the three different scenarios I played were all fun and unique in their own way, but it still felt like I was playing the same game. They didn't switch to the point where I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. You knew what you're doing, but there's just something new that was added that changes the game. And there's a good amount of components and content in each of the four to where you're going to have a lot of replayability. Each game mode provides its own unique amount of replayability. Ability. I frankly love this game. I love the component quality, the artwork, the style, the mechanics, all the design elements came out very well to me. The player boards, the fact that you're going to have the actual ability to just put the cards in, and their spacing, and choosing, uh, it's nice. Uh, one of those games where I definitely would play with the more thought-provoking people in my game group and not a game I would play with people who are more interested in a, re a relaxed, quick party game. This one has a lot of heavy thinking, this game has a lot of choice, and because of that it comes with a little bit of analysis paralysis depending on what you want to do and how you want to organize your cards. You would think that organizing three cards wouldn't be so much of a deal, but it actually is. Overall, Sierra West is an excellent game. I strongly recommend you checking it, and it will stay in my collection for a long, long time.